There we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How is everybody doing tonight? <clears throat> Hope you're having a wonderful evening. Good evening, Duchess. We have Throwback Hero says hello as well. Just quickly check Twitch here. We have, ooh, how is that even pronounced? I think I tried to pronounce your name before and con concluded that I'm probably going to butcher it. Dragon Eye, and we have the Sweet Potato of War. So where's the sound? Your sound how count doesn't know it. It's, it's Claire de Lune. Uh, Stone Glower also posted. Funny story why you can't detect it. I'll come back to that in a second. Let me just quickly get over to YouTube where we have and that we have Star Lost, uh, Great Horn, I think, Robert. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. At at Dulba, something along those lines. <laughs> Raymond Matrix, of course, Don Glora else. Well, oh, well, there we go. Quinchburn, Cesspool, Telecaster, Vyuk, Han, Aku. Wow, can't pronounce that either. <laughs> Hello, Brian and Christopher. Hello, everybody. Oh, and we scroll down here. Stick in, stick, stick in, stick in. Ah, okay, got it. Stick in, perfect. Um, no, so quick story about Claire de Lune that I use in the intro. Um, first of all, it's a wonderful piece, and the thing with classic music is obviously it's written so long ago that nobody holds copyright over the the music like the, the the music itself however people can't copyright um recordings of that music so if if let's say a big orchestra or oh, well now the uh, claire de lune is a single piano piece but let's say someone sits down at a piano and plays claire de lune records it that recording they can copyright claim which is fair now, the problem is when you have a piece like Claire de Lune, which is a single piano piece, if played in the correct key, and if two pianos are tuned identically, it's very difficult for a algorithm to list to hear the difference. Now, the specific version I'm using is by a, um, by a guy um, that uploads, uh, he makes like music for games, and he has some of his music that he's been played, put, upload that to SoundCloud. And he has a version of Claire de Lune that he has recorded that he has put up in the public domain. Meaning, he said, here is me playing Claire de Lune. You are free to use this if you want to. Which, of course, I've done. Now, so, like, all the rights are okay here. I have permission. Like, nobody holds copyright over the actual music. I have permission for the guy who recorded it. Beautiful. Problem is... Claire de Lune was also used in James Bond's Quantum of Sorrows. I believe it's in that, in that movie. Again, single piano. That means YouTube can't... Um, uh, yes, Dragon Eye, I can try to find it if you want. Uh, hold on. But, that, but YouTube can't distinguish the difference between the version that that guy did and the version that used in... Um, uh, in Quantum of Sorrows. And because Sony, I believe it's Sony, I can't remember who it is, but anyway, like, the guys behind it have been absolute assholes and went out and copyright claimed their version of it, which sounds exactly, well, very close to identical. Long story short, in order to actually use that piece, I had to transpose it, I think, like two and a half half steps, or like one and a half half steps, I think, um, in order to get it outside the range and slightly change the tempo, so it's slightly shorter, or slightly lo slower, I think, than the original recording. But I have to do that in order to, to get around the automatic detection. I have tried to contact YouTube support, and there's just like, meh, if it detects it, then you can't use it. But anyway, long story short, um, somebody asked about if I have a link. I'll just quickly check if I have it stored here in my browser. If I don't, I do have it. Now, 
please don't start playing. Okay, I think we only got two notes there. That should be fine. Um, I'm just going to post that. So, I believe that one is it, the SoundCloud, Claire de Lune. Um, such a beautiful piece. Love the guy who uh, who's recorded it. Um, and yeah, if you go... Uh, actually, I should have this on the other screen. Hold on a second here. Da, 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 da. Pause that right away. Let me get chat back. Here we go. Um, get main screen. Here we have it, right? And as you can see here, um, Lawrence licensed under a common a creator's commons license and a creator's common license means that it is free to use share and adapt under the following terms so but anyway long story short about that intro let's get main camera back and i let me get it really booted up i haven't done that yet get something to drink so the plan for today is to go and get some distance covered on my colonial I'm out in the middle of nowhere right now and um, I have like a cluster of bookmarks that I want to go and visit and the plan is to begin to make our way towards that now um or not included <laughs> yeah it's the it's the d2a mark today look at that beautiful invisible paint and i think i even yeah wow oh, that's the thing to, to get a clean shirt on tomorrow also see you in space t-shirt also available in the merch store again invisible paint not included but yeah we're gonna go we're gonna go and do some exploration and we're gonna basically just have a chit chat along the way and it's usually a ton of fun and we're gonna see if we can come across some interesting planets or at least fun or odd planets and actually what i want to do as well this is going to be interesting that i know now that i'm running on actually i should be in that corner instead so i'm not so intrusive when we're doing um scanning i need to get uh, ed scout running yes i know Oh, hold on. Lord Winter says, why do all drink water? Why not drink Pepsi or Cola? <laughs> I am... Um, I think I'm heavy enough already. <laughs> I don't need, need any more calories, so... And also... I think it's, well, when I'm talking for two hours straight, I do have a tendency to get quite thirsty. Now we're gonna be running, just gonna get you guys back here. I'm gonna be running ED Scout today. I do have a video coming out on this on Saturday, um, but it's a wonderful little exploration tool. I've been absolutely loving it. And um, basically I just wanna run it. It's gonna be a little difficult today since I'm only running um only running one monitor because obviously you guys are taking up the other monitor right now with stream and everything so we have to tap out and it's not ideal but it will have to do and the tablet uh my girlfriend stole my tablet or wife now his wife uh stole my tablet so i don't have that either there we go okay is that where we're going yeah that seems about right we're not that far out actually pretty close how many jumps 46 drive So <clears throat> let's get jumping
Have I heard anything about Dev Diary 2? No. I know Dev Diary 2 is gonna be a thing eventually. I don't know when and I don't know what the topic is. Ah, 46 jumps that in, in... I mean, this is just around the corner. I mean, how far are we away from the bookmarks right now? From the first cluster of bookmarks, like less than 2,000. I have to remember, I started my trip in the bubble. I made my way out to that system there, where there is a rather pretty planet with some high mountains on it. Then I cut across over to Colonia and been flying around the Colonia area, and now I'm making my way in here toward this cluster of bookmarks. And I don't know what I want to do after, whether I just want to go by straight line it back to Colonia or what I want to do, but we'll fi figure that out. Okay, let's get some distance and uh, let's see what we got here. Anything, let me just get this thing set up on where the water wells, oh, actually water wells are after, right? Oh, they're there. So earth light starts right around there. Let's set it there. And then we keep jumping. I'm not gonna stop unless I find water worlds um, or earth likes, obviously. I know there can be some um, some high metal content worlds that can be quite valuable. We are gonna overheat. Uh, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, this is the second account. I actually have three accounts right now. Um, and this is the second one that's running around out in the Colonia area. So we got here. Mm, nothing of interest. It's quite nice, I think, to have a character that just out there in the black. Because the reason why I started the second account was because I always have my main account that I wanted, to, and, I, and whenever I wanted to go to exploration trips, it's always oh, but then I need to make sure I've had done all the recording I need to do back in the bubble for at least a month, and that's just often not feasible because things happen. So that's why I decided to get a second account. Um, originally, actually, I started to get the second account because I wanted to do new player uh, stuff. If I wanted to show something in the early stages of the game, I needed a second account. But then I began using it as an expiration alt, which is then why now I have a third account, which is then the account that I like resets all the time to, yeah. Um, okay, quick question. I'm on the road for a fleet carrier. Would you recommend one for an average player that depends on what you do and what you're going to use it for. I found it to be quite nice to have, but absolutely not a need to have. Um, yes, I do have a video on the FSS scanner. I have a quite detailed video on the FSS scanner, actually. Um, both accounts on Steam? Uh, no. I got them through... Basically, the way I got them was... I made a new account on the... Um, I made a new account on the Frontier um, homepage with a new email. So, like, new email, new account, all that stuff. Um, and... Then I bought, locked into that account, I bought it from Frontier directly, rather than through Steam. Because that means I can just have, the Steam has my Elite Dangerous installed, and then I just have three copies of the launcher, each copy of the launcher, just the launcher exit file, not the full game, just the launcher exit file, I have three copies, each pointing to the different accounts. See, nothing here. Um, but we can do, I can do a, a, like, a very quick uh, crash course in FSS scanning. Let's do it in a system where we actually have something to scan. So, <clears throat> next time we get to a system, I'm going to talk you guys through what I do.
if we're gonna find anything before we actually make it to the target system. How's our route at the moment? See, a lot of this system here towards the end has already been discovered as we get close to that nebula. That's okay. What's the best practice to navigate to something interesting on a planet um, in the system map? Um, by eye, I guess, if you don't have that as, an, uh, <clears throat> as a point of interest. <laughs> How do we plot a route that can't be routed via the ship mainframe? Mm, I'm not sure what you mean. Can't be plotted. Like sometimes it's you will have to do like instead of doing very long long routes, especially when you're in close to uh, to the galactic center, you might have to do shorter routes. Um, just to uh, just because then it takes too long to calculate. And in other cases, if you have big areas either that's very empty or where there's a lot of permit lock systems, like uh, like the Call Seventy sector then you might have to manually find a way around. Let's honk the system. Ever used EDSM for exploration trips? Um, no, nah, never. But I mean, like, take already pre-plotted suggestions for trips. I always just like fight my own targets and fly in some odd direction. Other labs such as research ones, I've never used them. I don't know. Um, so there are research limpets are meant to take tissue samples from thargoids. So you to shoot them at goids. Uh, I don't think we have anything interesting here either. Yeah, Lord Winter, that's going to be an issue, finding cell spots. There's not a lot of stations in that area that you can actually buy stuff at. But you can always find, like, go to Colonia, there should be plenty of options there. Are there any combat streams in the plan? Mm, I don't really plan my streams that far ahead, unless there's something very specific. Yeah, we are lucky with our systems right now. Um, but it may be about time that I do some combat again. It's been a while.
Come on, RNG, Jesus, give me something useful. That one up there is a gas giant, yes. Fuel, right. Yeah, there's been some problems with the pulse wave scanner, um, where it's it seems like it's lacking a few pulses behind, so the rocks always spawns behind you. <laughs> what the best PPE ship, and why is it the Fertilands? I think you uh, you misspelled um, Federal Corvette there. It's it's quite common. It's... Are you up to be planning on doing any PVP videos? No, I'm not. I don't do PVP. I mean, sure, if somebody wants to set up like an organized fight, well, then maybe I'll show up. But. I'm not a good combat pilot, and I'll most likely get myself killed. <laughs> I never claimed to be a good combat pilot. So, no, I'm not planning to do any kind of PvP livestreams. I am for sure not gonna go out and interdict random people and try to kill them. Damn, there's a lot of stuff here. The only time I've actually interdicted another player where it wasn't where it wasn't planned, like it wasn't something that was agreed upon beforehand, was a couple of years ago, I think. So I think two years ago, like a year and a half ago now, maybe. During uh, Christmas, I had a, I had a Christmas event where I filled a cutter up with low temperature diamonds, and then I flew around close to the new player space, and I interdicted new players, and called them up on the like in-game voice comp thing, and I said, hey, how much cargo do you have? And I filled their ship up with no temperature diamonds and told them where they could go and sell it. <laughs> Basically running around giving away Christmas presents to people. That's the only time I've ever interdicted someone where it wasn't... Uh, a, a player, I should say, where it wasn't a uh, something that was agreed upon before. <laughs> And some, yes, there were people who ran away. I was like, dude, stop, stop your ship. I have, <laughs> I have free stuff, but they just ran. And if, if people did try to run away, I, I just let them fly. I wouldn't go after them a second time. <laughs> So if you ever see me interdicting, if you ever get interdicted by me around Christmas, <laughs> then do stop your ship. Oh, here we go. Ah, that's a gas giant. Uh, thought that was uh, was a water world. It was pretty close. How to know. So I normally, like, when I do exploration, I usually only stop for water worlds and earth bikes. Maybe Ammonia worlds too, because they can be quite valuable. And while I'm, if, if I stop, <clears throat> wow, sorry. If I stop to scan those planets, 
I will also scan all terraformable high metal content worlds. They are quite common, but I don't want to stop in every single system to scan it out just because then it's going to take forever. We're never going to get anywhere. Um, and at that pace, I can cover about about a thousand light years an hour, which is not that fast at all. But um, I like this type of exploration. It doesn't have to be fast. I mean, I could just run neutron stars all the way, but eh, it's not fun. Uh, Duchess, you, if you want to get credit for uh, for undiscovered black holes, you will have to have something that syncs with EDSM running while you're exploring. So that could be uh, the ED Market Connector, could be... Uh, there's a ton of tools now, ED Discovery, um, even Game Glass uh, links to EDSM now. Um, so any of those tools, and then the data will be updated. Still nothing. We're running out of we gotta be there. <laughs> We're already 16 systems in and we haven't found anything. We end up being uh, arriving in the in the system before uh, before it was a plan. Um where am I heading to? I'm heading to that cluster of of nebulas you can see there in front of us. There's a bunch of bookmarks. So there's like a live stream a long time ago where I asked you guys for any systems that you thought was interesting and I think you should visit and I bookmarked a lot of them all over the galaxy and there was just a big bunch of them all located around that uh, galaxy that the uh, cluster of, um, of nebulas there so I figured let's go and take a look let's see what uh, what it has to offer I'll just get some fuel here let's check that it's nothing and I'm still just like running around checking them out, and it's often quite fun. with that oh, oh click into the game stop <laughs> the void hearts what is the void hearts obviously i haven't been there oh i haven't honked the system What is the thing with undiscovered black holes? Black holes are just rare. You don't find them that often. So when you do and they are undiscovered, it's, it's quite an achievement actually. I think I have my name on a few black holes that I found back in like the first year of Elite. There's really not a lot of stuff here. Look, I gonna... I wanna go and try something here, hold on. I just need to, not that it has anything to do with that, but it just, this lever doesn't really work for me. I just wanna try, it. that's not the settings I want. Uh, whoops. Controls. Mm. 
camera pitch, camera yaw. Zoom to target should be that one. Tuning. Absolute tuning. Yes. Let us change that. So now, yeah, this is a lot easier to control. So I can just go, I want to see that, or I want to see that, or that, or that. That's a lot easier. And what is right in the center? There is that limit. Okay, nice. Oh, let's get out of the atmosphere first. Um, I'm not sure I understand that question there. What program would you recommend for using to tie three party, third party programs and the others together so that it can be imported to the game? I'm not sure what you mean with that. With that. Is there a way to know? I think maybe EDSM can tell you what systems you have been uh, the first to discover. Um, if you had it running, of course. Ooh. Got two stars in this one. Oh, this is close though. I think that's a nice... Oh, right now I'm on this one instead. Yeah, I think that is an ice world. But, um... That's a shame. That was close. Only 26 jumps. We're almost halfway there, and <laughs> we're only half an hour into the stream. And that's with all the shenanigans at the start. We have a hello from Norway. Hello and welcome. Far are we? That's a fuel star. Fuel scoop disengaged. So you can see this area over here has like one, two, four bookmarks that I need to go and visit. Should have done the exploration trip the cube combat. No. No 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 no. That would have taken forever. If we get too close, I'll switch it over to uh, economical routing to uh, to get some more systems discovered. But we should probably do that early because as we get closer, most of the systems are gonna be pre-discovered already. I think. Not a whole lot of luck today. Again, 24 systems. How are we doing for... Okay, we still have like quite a few. That's fair enough. Let's hope for something as we get closer here.
Yeah, I'm not sure if you can make a list of what you already have discovered. There might be a tool that can do that, but I'm not really sure which one. Yeah, if we had Odyssey, we could have landed on the Ice World, but we don't. <laughs> There's nothing here. Empty system. It's a pretty dead section of space, it seems, in terms of interesting planets. We could try to go for some bigger stars, see if we can do that. That could be fun, maybe. <laughs> we just need one system with a funny, with a funny planet in it. Then we can make a pit stop there. Not here. Um, I think right now I'm just going for any scoopable star. Uh, just... Well, yeah. Just to be sure that I don't extend you run out of fuel. They always have the option to go and fuel at a star. And I guess the, the non-main secret stars would have a tendency not to have that many water worlds, I would think. Try to adjust our filters a little bit. Go for some hotter stars. I don't know. If nothing else, we're just going to go around and visit all these bookmarks here. I mean, we have that one there. That's quite a bit away as well. Would road to ridges help you find... Mm, road to ridges don't really work out here because it's mostly undiscovered systems. Road to ridges requires that you actually are in an area where, where most systems are already discovered. Like the bubble. Some say F and G types are likely to have. Okay, you know what? Just for fun, let's go and uh, let's try to see how far we can get if we just get rid of this lighter ones there. Fuel scooping complete. There we go. So now we only have G and up. We get rid of all the smaller ones. Um, so the overlay actually never got published, and 
currently it's in a non-working state, I think. Uh, the project kind of died, to be honest. Um, the idea was okay, I think. But, I don't know, it just never really felt right. It never really got, like, polished enough, and I guess I could have spent more time. The main problem was I tried to capture uh, Hotus inputs. I could capture key inputs, that was okay, but Hotus input was an issue. How do you set coordinates for planetary landing? You can't. That you have to do manually, and if, if you want to land on a random set of coordinates, then you have to, uh, to do it manually, if there's no point of interest close to. When you get to the planet, um, that's where you can see coordinates. When you get to the planet, it should show show in the um, like in the main part of the hut, like just above your shields, basically, where you have the hologram with your ship and your shield. It should be showing there the longitude and latitude. Now well, you can use the guide that Don Glora has very handily <laughs> posted back in 2007, actually 17, actually that's quite a while ago. Thanks for the follow. Oh, nothing there either. Yeah, that's quite a while ago, isn't it? It's only three years ago, actually. <laughs> Okay, come on. Maybe we should get rid of G-Stars as well, just because, I don't know. 22. Um, the throwback hero says, when you use arcs to unlock lettering, um, yeah, so like decals and uh, bubble heads, that can be used for all ships, but paint jobs is just for one ship. So the actual colors for the ship is just for that one ship that you buy it for, but all the other bubble heads and decals you get for all the ships. Cloud 999, thanks a lot. <laughs> I was like, figure out how to pronounce that again. Yeah, 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 okay. So that's a, that's a good uh, good point there, Don Gloro. If you, buy, if you buy a paint job for a ship, you buy it for that ship model. That means if I buy one for the Crate Phantom, for instance, that I'm flying now, even if I bought 10 Crate Phantoms, I could use the paint job on all of them. And if I buy bobbleheads, I can use the same bobbleheads in all my ships without having to buy them multiple times. So you just unlock them for that ship. It's not like you're buying a paint job. Just unlock it. Oh, here we go. Just as guardian stuff. Yeah, exactly. Still
Still no water wheels. Nope. This is quite unlucky so far. Running this long without anything at all. How far are we from discovered systems? We actually have the next system coming up here. And then we're heading into a string of already discovered systems. There's something there. There's one system here. That has some decent prices in it, I think. Full metal set that he is on his way to Colonia and he's about a thousand light years away. That's just around the corner, basically. What system are you in? I might come here and visit. Because I kind of feel like I need a detour right now. Because now we're in this pre-discovered systems. Oh, hold on. Yeah, we should check that. That's a left type star. That color is very distinct. Fuel scooping. Okay. How am I on fuel? I'm okay. Should we just try to figure out what I actually ended up calling these systems here? Because I did bookmark them. But I can't remember what I what they were actually named. So uh Okay, there's one out. No, that's not it. Two black holes. So that's one of them. Apparently there's a system there with two black holes in it. That could be fun. Black hole the neutron star. That's not it. Uh, Devil's Dance. No idea. Exploration. All the neutron stars. Is there a system here? That's not. That's not it. Mountains. I think that's the one I already visited. Yes. And there's a fast neutron star apparently. Is that one of the ones we are close to? Uh, no. Okay, that's another one. Jameson's Metal Spheres. Oh, we have some... Nope, that's not here. Neutron Star and Star Close. So there's something with a Neutron Star and another star very close by. There we go. Okay, that's also an old cluster. No, that's a bubble. Okay. P-type anomaly. Oh, there we go. That looks nice. Pink elephants. <laughs> Planet of Death, Pulsar and Magnetar. <laughs> Raxler. <laughs> Supernova Remnants. That's also close to the bubble. And then we have the thing also, the Sino. Yeah, that's the one, that's the Sino jellyfish in this area. We have full metal to says that he is in 
this system, receive it, copy paste. Yeah. You know what? That's basically next door. Well, let's go and say, let's go and say hi. We gotta go for a detour, and hopefully we gotta find something along the way. What hoaxes am I using? I am using a Constellation Alpha on a Verpal Warbird base, and then I have a Verpal Mongoose T50. Not the CM2, the original, this, this one. This bad boy. It's massive. Did I consider? Yes. So I have been looking at other manufacturers. Um, and originally I didn't really like any of verbal sticks either because I want a stick with twists. I have, okay, I have two things I need in a joystick. I need the twist from side to side. I need my, let me get this sideways. I need my primary trigger and I need some kind of secondary trigger down here. The second trigger just now opened up my. Uh, let's get this back. Uh, where was that exit? There it is. No, I don't like pedals for your. Too fast. What are you talking about? Okay, don't know why it got wrong there. I prefer to have my uh, my yaw on the stick rather than uh, on pedals. One of the main reasons why I don't want to have pedals um, is because I have two bunnies running around down here. And if I have a pair of pedals on the floor with a wire to them, It'll be about five minutes, and I have a pair of pedals with no wire to them. <laughs> and that will get expensive real quick. So, and also I just gotten used to having the jaw. It's just such a natural feeling for me now to use it like that. So I think it would be, be difficult for me to go and, uh, and change that. Did I try the VKB? Cause no, I have not tried any of VKB's uh, equipment. I have uh, some experience now with Verpal Gear. Um, and then I have, so the, the, the joysticks I've tried is the X52 Pro, the X56, and now Verpal. That's the three joysticks I've owned. Nothing. I don't know if you're about to jump with the fleet carrier because it will be a while, probably like half an hour before I'm there um, at this pace. Yeah. <laughs> Fuel 
I actually think a lot of what Verpal does is handcrafted, yeah. Raging says that it takes a while. Um, at least I've seen pictures from them where they have... Uh, it was uh, it was before the Constellation Alpha was launched. It was when it was after the, the pre-order, but before it was actually officially launched. They show pictures of like a working desk where they just have all the two different halves of the joystick just laying out like next to each other while I was sitting someone sitting like putting in like small all the small contacts all the, the hats and all that stuff so I think they get the stuff manufactured somewhere um, probably somewhere in Asia and then they, uh, they assemble it on site and then ship it And I think the reason they do that, I don't know, but my guess is that because of the quanti like the, the quantity they are selling, it wouldn't be worth worth it for them to have them pre-assembled. So it's probably easier for them just to order all the parts, which might just very well come from different suppliers. This, I mean, I would imagine they could go someplace to get the, uh, the, the actual joystick molded and then buttons and switches and hats come from somewhere else and yeah Ah, yeah, Fire Aster. Um, yeah, we out exploring and just taking a small detour because there was one of the guys in chat. Yeah, so I'm. If you're heading towards Colonia. And I'm heading up here. Yeah, if you were doing one jump towards Colonia, that would actually bring you about 500 light years closer. When you log in a system, let me know which system you're logging into. Then, um, then I'll go ahead and uh, redirect. Hog that like button, yes, guys. If you do like these more casual streams, just a little bit more chatty than uh, than usual, then do go down. Ooh, what do we have here? And hit that like button. It really helps a lot. And we got a silver water world. So now I definitely have to do a stop here. So, I also promised to give you like a crash course in uh, FSS scanning. So I'm just gonna quickly go and refuel, get some distance to the star, because the star will be, uh, be blocking um, our field of view. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the scans. Am I excited about Odyssey? Oh yeah. I'm <laughs> very much looking forward to Odyssey. I'm really, I don't know when the beta is going to be, but I would assume that we're going to see the beta, I would guess, like November, latest December. Um, and that's going to be amazing. Okay, so I got some distance. Now, what I want to do here is basically, if you look, if you look uh, at the filter spectrum uh, at the bottom here, you can see as I cover, as I move over the different objects that we can see, notice how the, the little like the little like peaks above it, how they change. So this one is a three one one, and this one is two two one, and this one is two two two. So if I now move around, you can see this one there. You can see in the outer ring has two, inner ring has two, oh, sorry, middle ring has two, inner ring has one. So that's a two two one, which was that one. You can also see the color change as I move away. They kind of fade out and they become bright white as I hit the right frequency. So now I know that this is an ice body. Lo and behold, that was an ice body. So we can continue to move. You can see here, here we have a, what looks like a 311. Right? But that's probably because there's more than one here. So you can see if we move around, we can see there, there are at least a. There's a 2-1-1 as well. 
This is right there. There's another ice body. And then we have what looks like a 3 one, one Which is these ones. High metal content worlds. Keep going. 2 one, one. There's the ice buddies. 2 one, one. That's another ice buddy. Oh, here we have multiple. These are high metal content worlds, I believe. Yeah, 311. So those are high metal content worlds. And there's another 211 down here. That's the other ice world. And that's the 222, which is our water world. And now we can go into this little ED scout and we can see here that planet one and planet two is worth scanning, right? Because those are up in the millions in terms of price. And they're also both within a thousand light seconds of the main star. So to scan planet one and planet two. Did I say two and one? Yeah, might have been two one. Hold on, let me check that again. Yeah, two two one, not two one one. Two two one. My bad. So let's go for that one. And the reason why this is so valuable is because it's probably terraformable. Yes, body is a candidate for terraforming. Let's move towards that. And then while we do that, let's just go and take a look at the statistics of the planet. Why would this be the candidate for candidate for terraforming? I need to move myself away, so let's put myself down that corner instead. <laughs> it's about the same size as the Earth. It's slightly heavier. Slightly heavier gravity as well. Surface temperature is a little on the warm side. Um, but again, I guess closer to the to the poles of the planet would be better. Now it's pretty much a pure carbon dioxide atmosphere. There's a little bit of nitrogen, there's no oxygen. But I guess if there's any kind of water on the world, then we have silicate magma geysers on this one. So that would be a hard one to terraform, I think. The listing tool is called ED Scout. Um, it's a really neat little tool. I have a video coming out about it on Saturday. Let's go ahead and map this thing. Let's make ourselves some money. Did I try Elite VR? Yes. I haven't played in VR for quite a while, but that's because my VR is currently in a box. I haven't set it up after the studio was rebuilt. But i have to do that eventually. Okay, seven probes. I think we can do this in six. I'm gonna make a guess for six here. And can I hit the back? Where's the mist? It's there. So it's gonna do like that. Oh, look at that. That was perfect there. Just Barely covered. That one was a little off. One of the back was pretty good as well. Boom, there we go.
Next is the water world. The main reason why we're actually here. There are so many tools at the moment, like ED Scout is, is one Elite Observatory, apparently. I actually never heard of that. There's ED Discovery. There's so many tools at the moment for, uh, for explorers. The ship is the Crate Phantom. Do you play with an edited graphics settings? No, I think my current graphics settings is pretty close to stock. Um, I do play with everything on Ultra, though. Stuck in a gravity well. Okay, the fleet carrier has moved. Let's see where he's at now. Ah, that's where you just arrived. Okay, good. That's where I'm already pointing at. I think after my initial trip out to Colonia, I made like 300 million on this account. The majority of the money that I have was actually made from that trip. I don't have that much left on this account. Get a little closer. There we go. Okay. Seven again. Uh, let's see if we can't do this. Oh, wait. I need the backside as well. This is going to be a little bit more difficult. You can see these small corners there that are not covered. We are at... Are we going to make it to 90? Yes, we are. Nice. Okay. That was not the right key. That was the key I wanted. I don't believe the scanner is engineered, but I'll have to check. Let me just get to the next system, then we can check. I can't actually remember if I didn't get this. The ship was built like a year ago or something. Wait, my frame subscribe boost is offline? Why? Power probably, yeah. Nope. <laughs> I 
Well, that's pretty stupid. Must have forgot to turn that thing back online at some point. Yeah, oops. <laughs> oh, didn't want to bookmark it. Ah, hold on. The star type here. Uh, let me just check. We're actually here to look at the detailed surface scanner. No, it's not engineered. Okay, I don't think I've honked this system. Fourteen jumps now. No, this is not like the road to riches. This is just like, let's fly into the black and let's find stuff and things. Is this a keyboard and mouse? Yeah, it's been a while since I've done it, but yeah, I mean, a lot of players do it and definitely works. I mean, you have a lot more key bindings than you do on a controller. So, full metal, where are you at? Are you still in the system that we're heading to? Still in the system. Yeah, 12 jobs out. Shouldn't be too long unless we find something interesting. We need to stop and take a look. Not there. That's gas giants, right? Yeah, it is. The tool I used to see what bodies are worth is called ED Scout. And I will have a video out on the tool on Saturday. Seven? Nope. Disengaged. Drive charging. 
I always like this, like, where's my head look here? How you have this, I don't, I've never really understood why it does it. When you have this area out here that's just full of stars and then it's just sharp edge and then there's nothing. How many planets are in your system for it to be worth scanning? It's not really the number of planets, it's more the types of planets. I mean, many planets might be worth like a few thousand, maybe a few ten thousand credits per planet. But then you have some planets, often the ones you see in this area with the... Um, where are they here? You have the Earth likes, um, the Ammonia worlds, and the uh, Water worlds. Those, this, this area here that's where the money is those bodies can often be worth millions especially if you're the first to discover them high metal content worlds that are terraformable are also quite good and can give quite a lot but you can't distinguish i leave i haven't found an easy way to distinguish them on the scanner whether they're terraformable or not so i just yeah So I usually don't bother much with the with the high metal content also because they are so common. Um, so for me, it's a good balance to just go for those three Earth likes, Water worlds, Ammonia worlds, and if I find them, I stop, I scan, and then I take all the terraformable high metal content worlds while I'm at it. Well, we had eight jumps out. While watching for Raxler. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because originally I thought the problem with the uh, with like the sharp edge is because there is a hard cap on how many stars it will render in the background, like the whole background around you. So if you're in a high density area, it might just start generating to just stop at some point. That might be why you get this hard edge. But I tried to go into the ma to manually to go into the config files and up that number so that it allows more stars, but it didn't really change anything. Um, so, I don't know. Martin, has, did I play No Man's Sky? Yes, when was the last time? It was doing the... What was that update that came out? Like the... The, the, the one I think it added some multiplayer thing to the game. Or more supportables. I can't remember. Was it called Beyond as well? Also, I can't remember what it was called. Um, but I played doing that and quite enjoyed it, but I don't know, it, it kind of died on me again. Interested at dust, yeah. I could try to just turn that off completely and see if that did anything. Okay, we should be just a few jumps out from uh, from Full Metal, and uh, then we gotta go and say hi, have a look at his fleet carrier, and we gotta make our way back and hopefully find something on the way. Um, but while we're just doing these last, how many jumps? Five jumps. Remember to go down, hit the like button, guys. It really helps a lot, especially with these streams, as I am running out of fuel. That would be really embarrassing to run out of fuel now. Ooh, I think that, yeah. I was pretty close to uh, to Earth likes though, but nope, it's uh, it's a rocky ice world, and there we are up in gas giant area. Wait. Ah, 
And thanks for all the follows on Twitch as well. Viper, um... I'm glad you could able to help. Said you haven't played in a while, but you always keep me up to date. I wait for Space Lakes, so keep it up. Thank you very much, and I sure will. Am I gonna do an in in a tutorial on how to install ED Scout? Yes. Well, there's not that much to install. It's a standalone EXE file, but I do show you both the tool on um, on Saturday in the video, but also how you download it and how you like, get it to run, that kind of stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for Saturday. There should be a video out on DD Scout. Let's see what we get. We did check this system. Right, we did check the system. There's nothing there. Dutch, you say you uh, are you spamming the EDSM servers now with the uh, with expiration locks? Is ED Scout mobile friendly? So it's a standalone EXE file, but it has a built-in web interface that you can use, meaning you can set it up to host a like it basically sets up a small web server um, that allows you to um to basically access it from a phone or something that's on your local network you can't access it from outside your local network but anything on your own network can access it and then you can run it on a tablet or something like that it requires like one command line that you have to run so it's, it's not built into the ui um right now it's just a command line but yes you can do that Did I make a video for all ships now that the free fly event? Um, no, not yet. But I have been having quite fun some of the ships until today. When I was, I was actually earlier today. I was out mining in Star Citizens, um, with the like the small surface car thingy, and then the thing flipped over on its roof because I was a little hasty. Um, so the thing flips over, and I'm desperately trying to get it back on its wheels, which it just will not do. Um, there's no boosters or anything on it like you have an elite. Oh, Waterworld! Hold on. Oh, I think that's one of the trolley ones. We do have Waterworld. Nice. Um, so I decide to... Okay, so what do I do? I can't flip my car over and it's, it's full of like stuff and things I want to take back with me. Okay, what I ended up doing was taking my ship and try and poke it with the ship to try and flip it over. Which just made the car glitch through the ground and fall to the center of the planet. And now all my materials were gone. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't very fruitful. But I guess that's part of the Star Citizen's experience. <laughs> I'm actually doing quite well with Star Citizens. I'm up to like a million and a half now.
Why is it always the last one? Ooh, pretty. Oh, we should check ED Scout. So it seems like this system has actually been discovered before. You can see all of these has been discovered before. This water world is worth like a million. So let's go and scan it just for good measures. A million and a half converted to ED credits. So it's enough. Like, I'm saving up for a ship that's two million credits. And that is a... Um, it's a decent medium-sized ship. So like two million credits in, in, in or Alpha UEC in Star Citizens is probably equivalent to like... Uh, I would say like 50 million or something like that in... Um... um in Elite, playtime-wise, it's a lot of playtime because you don't accumulate wealth as quickly as you can in Elite. Um, like, it's not like you can buy a new ship after an hour of gameplay, which you can if you're effective at mining, right? In Elite. Um, so there's a lot more gameplay that goes into it. So hours-wise, a lot. But if you, like, wanted to try and compare it, it's enough, like, 2 million is enough to buy, like, a, a, a decent medium-sized ship. I think... What is the 890 jump in game? Is it like 25 million? 24, 25 million? Something like that, I think. Which is one of the biggest, most expensive ships you can buy. Just to kind of put it in... 26, okay. 26 million. at this this is six probes so we're gonna go like that like that that there there and there's the miss so we're gonna put that there Surface by 50%. see how that hit was there on the back little bit too far but we got it anyway okay next system let's go we had two jumps out full metal we almost there don't move <laughs> Perfectly still. Perfect. Let's see what we get. One body. Okay, well. Does ED Scout need Chrome? No. It's a standalone exafile. Wait, full metal. Do you have uh, do you have cartography data on your fleet carrier? Because I could actually sell my car truck. Ooh, I might be able to sell my car truck then. Just gonna scan the system here, see what we have. Just for good measures. And I'm pretty sure that's a yeah, that's an ice buddy. Okay. We should have a fleet carrier. There we go. The Aurora Boralis, aka Northern Light.
Yeah, it's a good carry name. See lock to to the ship. That's not the right button, clearly. Ah, oh, I can never remember this. Where's my rotational correction? There it was. Ah, hold on. What do I have in my firing groups? That's what went wrong. Ah, because I have a pulse laser that's online, I think. Let's turn that off. Manifest scanner. Wake scanner. That should be better. while since I've been docking this ship. <laughs> I don't think there's a CDN sign up a station or anything since, I don't know, a year ago. Thank you very much. Oh, look at that. Clearly exploration carrier. I don't have any fuel I can give you, but uh, I'll sell my car talk data and with 5% so if that should give you a little bit, I guess. Let's see how much we have actually. No, I didn't went into silent. I uh, deployed my weapons because <clears throat> I had that uh, beam laser it went over power and uh, anything, everything died. Okay, lots and lots of systems here. We have seven pages, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and sell what I have. Should be some more valuable systems. First discover bonus. About to say, was that it? <laughs> Nine million for that page, that's better. Why do I only have 140 million credits? Because I'm on my alt. First discover all the things. Ah, didn't I have like seven pages? There we go. That's more like it. More first discovers. That's a hundred thousand. That's actually quite a bit. That's an annoying buck. Oh, 
But like eight to nine millions per page is not bad. See, those are the systems that I stop in where I get four million suddenly for a system. Majority of systems doesn't really give much. Yeah, so while we're just uh, quickly gonna sell all our exploration data and uh, and cash in, get some uh, get refueled. If you can remember to go down and like it, like the uh, the stream, it helps a lot, especially with uh, with live streams. YouTube's algorithm really likes likes on live streams. Give it time to load. Seven million. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> There's some money to be made. Look at that. One system, 10 million. What's in this system? High metal. So there we have basically three high metal content worlds that all were terraformable. And then a water world. And then a bunch of other things that just all adds up. 10 million for one system. There's another one here, 2.8, 4.8, 1.4. This is a good page. What distance was that? This was basically from Kulo. It's less than 10,000 light years. And some first discover bonuses as well. That was a really good page. We started at what? Uh, 130-ish? Something? 130-something? 8 million? This should probably end up being... I don't I can't remember how many pages do I have left? Two pages left, I think? Two? Three pages? No, that was the last page. Okay. Okay, so I made like 80 million for that. And I've basically been flying from Colonia. So about 10,000 light years. Of just like running around and exploring. And yielded me 80 million. Which is pretty neat. And if I can do the same on the way back, I'm just going to go to a slightly different plane and then run away back so I don't backtrack. And I still have a bit of exploring to do out here. I guess I could easily end up making... Make it to like, I don't know, 350 before I get back. That should be nice. Okay. Thanks a lot for, uh, for the visit. Full metal. I'll be making my way back. And... Uh, Wait, where are you planning to jump to now, actually? Where's your next stop? If you have that written down.
<laughs> Cobra fits, okay. <laughs> Somebody else got the idea before me, I can see. Oh, I still have my landing gear, hold on. Yeah, we can give it a little push. Uh, let's see, that one there. Come on, move! Okay, I don't think it works. Okay, I am not sure if Full Metal is still here, but I guess uh, we will leave him to it. And then we will begin to head down again. You know what, now that we are up here, I might just as well head out there to that one. I mean, I have to go down to these down here anyway. But now I've moved up here anyway, I might as well just head out there instead. Then we also... It'll actually be quite nice because then I... I ended up going up here. Oops. So we end up going up, so now I go over and then I go back. So I never backtrack on myself. Okay, we have our next system. Let's just check where that is. Ah, that's, that's in the wrong direction for us. Just wanted to see if we could hitch a ride, but it's not really helping us. We've got to move the other direction. Well, thanks for the pit stop. I'll just clear the mass lock and, uh, and then I'll be on my way. How many jumps now? Uh, 15 jumps. We can do 15 jumps. Okay, let's see what we got here. Nothing. What do I prefer as an exploration? As an explorer ship? Um, I would say... It's probably the Phantom, but... I want to say the Diamondback uh, Explorer, but the undersized fuel scoop and the lag of internals probably means the Phantom is going to be, uh, be my choice. The Anaconda is too big, it's too heavy for me, and I'm a little tired of the Anaconda. And I'm not going to go with the Asp Explorer simply because my first exploration trip when I started the game was in an Asp Explorer and I just remember that trip back. I just, I loved the ship on my way out, but I was so tired of it when I got back. I just wanted that thing out of it and never see it again after I've been spending like three months in it. And the way back, you know, it's one of those trips where I didn't really have... I just wanted to go out and explore, and I went out and exploring, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I have enough of this, and now I want to get back to the bubble. But it's a long way when you suddenly have 20,000 light years to cover in a ship where you're a little tired of it, and you don't really want to do any exploration, so you just, like, straight line it back, honk the systems and fly, don't really stop for anything, just fly, 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 to get back. And after that I got a little, nah, with the, uh, with the Asp Explorer. Um, so, Phantom, I think.
Yeah, I have done an, an exploration build on the Anaconda. I think I think I did like a a, a entry level like here's your first like, like not first exploration like here's an easy to like minimum engineering Anaconda kind of thing if I recall correctly, but it's a long time ago. Christian, you're very welcome. And again, remember that trip was... It's a long time ago, it was before Horizons. That means there was no engineering. And that means I think I had a jump range of like... Just shy of 40? Maybe 40 something if I was, if I was lucky. Um, but around 40 was pretty much the best you could do. Um, so it was a long trip home. Like, imagine a 40,000 or 20,000 light year trip in an unengineered Aspect Explorer. It's gonna take a while. I don't, I've never been a fan of stacking extra tanks for exploration builds because they cut into my jump range. And if I'm careful enough, I should be able to get all the fuel I need along the way by, by scooping. That's right, Christoph, that's a good point, that you can do a lot of your FSS if you basically just park the... the Diamondback Explorer is so cold, you can just park it inside the, uh, the scoopable zone and just do your FSS scanning from there. Um, so that kind of, like, helps it a little bit. System scan complete. There's no need to open the FSS scanner. We already have the one body as the star. Okay, that's a good point. Um, B deep says if you if you're running the uh, if you're running the neutron highway, then it makes sense, right? Because then you can do more neutron stars back to back without having to stop for fuel. But for this type of exploration, where I'm pretty much always landing in systems that have scoopable stars, it doesn't make a lot of sense to put extra fuel tanks in. Nothing of interest though. Hold on. That's a lot of stars. Nine jumps to go. Find something. I haven't found an earth like in quite a while. Oh, hold on. There's something there. Oh, it's one of those trolly ice worlds again. Look at that. That's earth like right there. Hate that. Hate that.
Yeah, Mark, I have uh, I have filters on my um, on my route to ensure I don't hit the brown uh, the brown dwarfs, so I just get scoopable stars only. Earth-like walls, <laughs> five hundred thousand light seconds away. Brown dwarfs are those like uh, dark purple stars that not really looks like a star, but more looks like a slightly glowing gas giant. Hello, Lee. Welcome. Yeah, real life can get in the way of gaming, but it is also more important than gaming. Yes, yes, guys, look at this. Damn it, it's another one. I thought I, I thought I put that right on the edge. Uh, and this is gas. Yeah, I thought I put that right on the edge between the two. So I saw that I thought that's an earth like, but no, nope, it's right there. And it's a rocky ice world. What was this destination even? I can't even remember anymore. The fuel scoop disengaged. QXU E2 something. Ah, want to zoom out a little bit, like this. There we go. Okay, so it's the P-type. What's my favorite star type? Hmm. That's a good question. Like the obvious would be like to go like neutral style white dwarf or something like that. Um I don't know. I don't really have a favorite star type. It would probably have to be a main sequence, I would guess. Maybe F. I like the color of F type stars. Oh, can you see it? Right there. That's it. That's where we're heading. Drive, 
Yeah, that's right. The blue ones are also quite pretty when they have that purple hue around them because they are like their black body radiation is going into the ultraviolet. Not ultra, yeah, ultraviolet. Three more jumps. Oh, I don't know. Should I just call the live stream now just before we reach the destination? No. We gotta go in and have a look. But what I do need is a bio break. So I will just do this quick jump here. Um. And then once we check this system out, I'm just gonna go and take a bio break. I think we're just one or two jumps now out from the off the off put a destination, right? Two jumps out. Let's check the system. Yes, you're right, Dunk Laura. It's time for bunnies. The bunnies will take over the flying for me. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Woohoo! I have some scanning to do first. Because look at that. That's an Earth like. And that's a water world. Well, I better get scanning. Undiscovered system, I guess. Nope. The system has been discovered before. So that means we should be able to go in here. Huh. It doesn't have the data. Okay, let's just scan the system anyway. So we're not going to get first discover on it, but that doesn't really matter. So 311. Oh, that's a pretty little one. That looks small. That's actually quite big. Okay. Never mind then. Ooh, okay, there's a lot around star B. Let's wait with that until we check if there's anything else here. Like that one. High metal content world. That looks like maybe that could be terraformable. Um, that's the Earth like. Another high metal content. Oh, it's the asteroid fields. Got it. Should probably be more of them over here. Yeah. Should be something around here somewhere.
Okay, I'll probably have to get closer to find that. Anything here? No? Can't find it. Yeah. I think I will have to get closer. Hope I got all these planets. No, nah, but Dutch, you have to remember, he could have discovered this system before mapping was uh, added to the game. Earth-like. See, that one I haven't discovered. There's a lot of high metal content worlds here. So far, not that many valuable planets. And those two are both, yeah, around the BC area. How many jumps were we out? Two jumps out. No, you do get a little bit extra. It's not a whole lot, but you do get a small extra bonus for undiscovered systems. Okay, let's try to take it from here. There's the water world. <coughs> Don't tell me they're back where I came from. They are, of course they are. Please don't tell me that those are high value planets. There we go. System is now fully scanned. And let's check this. Okay, so one, two, and three is pretty much... That's pretty good. So that's like five, six, six point seven, six point eight maybe. But, um, just go ahead and let's map these. Oh, look at that. You see, we can, we can thread the needle here. Ah, 
That wasn't too difficult. Look at that, that blue nebula there in the background. This is a lovely system. Oh no, the first loop was on purpose. This one wasn't, but... Uh well, we have six. I should have gone a little closer, make it easier to aim. Oh, that one didn't fire. There we go. Perfect. Where is that heading on the back? Again, a little bit too far, but it's good enough. You just look at these planets, just have a quick look here. A little low on oxygen, but other than that, orbital inclination. Axis tilt of nine degrees. That means you have a nice uh, summer, winter out of this well. I mean, apart from the oxygen being a little bit on the low side, then that's pretty good. This one has more metal than the high metal content world. I guess that says a lot. Oh, forgot to target it. <laughs> metal! Look at this one, though. That is cold. How is this a water world? They should be frozen. No, right. Hold on. Do I remember my Kelvin scale wrongly? I think I do. What? What is minimum, like, zero Kelvin? That's what, minus 273 Celsius? Should probably slow down here before we actually overshoot, which we are going to do. Yeah, 273. Okay, I remembered my Kelvin, uh, Kelvin scale correctly. Yeah, so 300 is room temperature. That's like 25 degrees. So the high metal content world is pretty warm. This one is actually quite manageable. I like that temperature. This is a little on the warm side for me. It's actually quite warm.
Okay, slow down. We're gonna crash this, this new, aren't we? Again, I'm shooting a little bit too far with those on the back, but it works. And let's get the war world as well. That should be a, a nice little chunk of money. You're always afraid to accidentally sell your engineered Corvette. You do get a warning screen saying, are you sure you want to do this? I actually think we just get two warning screens, I think, if you're trying to sell an engineered ship. I'm not sure, but I think you do. Hold on, whoops. I'm not paying attention to my flying here. Let's try that again. Yeah, I should have engineered the uh, the scanner, but nah, I didn't. I just love that blue... Uh, a little blue nebula there in the back. I guess it's a supernova remnant, actually. Hold on, what the hell? Did it target the system? When did it do that? I was like, I didn't think I would... God damn it! Uh. Must have hit that by accident or something, I don't know. Yeah, it was my next jump system, I know. Nice.
Hold on. That one is there? Oh god, I screwed this one up a bit. Put that one there, and then see if I can... ...not overshoot the middle this time. This one should bring me up close to 80% uh, on the shot of the bit. Well, we should hit 90. There we go. Nice! Now we can target our next system and do the jumping. But I think before we do that, I need that bio breakdown. <laughs> so. Why not do that? I will leave the flying over to the bunnies and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. And let me just get game sound as well. There we go. Hello, guys. I'm back. Let's do the last two jumps. <laughs> Bring the rapids back. I don't know where they are right now. Not here. Probably sleeping under the couch or something. Oh, look at that. Oh, well, we actually have. Do we actually do another stop here? No. I almost want to see if I can't get a one more jump before we jump in. I uh, want to go there first. I just want to get a good view of uh, of the nebula. Get in a little closer. Oh, supernova remnant or whatever. Got that! 
Yes. I love it. That looks amazing. We can get a good shot in here. Actually, you know what? I'm actually just gonna drop me out of super cruise here. Because I don't want those those long like uh, star streaks on the, on a screenshot here. Then we're gonna get a. I'm just gonna scroll out a little bit. And I want to have. Whoops. Come back here. Then I want. Where do I want this? I want this over here. So that I can turn it slightly to get better light on the top of the ship. I still want to make it look like it's actually flying towards that thing. I think I'm actually just in the wrong position here, hold on. Where's that sun? Or that star? It's there. So if I move myself over here instead. And then slow down. Ugh, come on. And then drop out. Here should be better. Yes, I will of course make sure to... Uh, to post the screenshot here in uh, in Discord. This is a lot better. Look at this. So I kind of want it to have it like kind of that angle. We need to have that little trail. You can see it where we entered on the, the right side of the screen. You can see the trail from where we dropped out. And then I guess. Something like that should be good. And then I just want this to fly in and reverse it out of frame. And when I take screenshots, uh, there will be a little window sound, just a heads up. Because I want full throttle on this. Nice. Let's just see that real quick. Come on. Ah, that opened off off camera or off screen on the other monitor here. Hold on. I think that ended up being a pretty good screenshot. Let's see. Where's my mouse? There it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like that one. What do you guys think of that? I might do a little bit of editing. I mean, not. I mean, it's already very vibrant, so I need to be very careful with uh, with the saturation. But I think we could do a little bit to kind of darken space a little bit, so it looks slightly darker or something like that. Um. But I'll be sure to post this on Discord afterwards. Maybe we're going to do a bit of editing on it as well. But for now, we're going to head in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think this might actually be my new wallpaper. I really like that one. That was really good. Slight editing on it just to to remove some of the some of the clouds maybe I don't know 
Oh, look at that. Look at that bright one down the middle. Room. There we go. Okay, let's honk the system. Notable still a phenomena. At least a couple of them. There's also a water world in here. There's a lot of objects in here, to be honest. I'll do those later. Let's for now let's go in. Take a look what we have here. <laughs> that was a pretty awesome, uh, awesome screenshot. Also, just flying around in here. I mean. Because we're inside that cloud now. You see how everything is blue. And it's not just because the light from the neutron star. You can see the light of the ship here is almost gone back to neutral. But we still have that blue hue everywhere. That's so nice. Okay, this is in the rings. It seems like it. What even is this planet? It's a jazz giant with water based life. Let's see who we get. Kind of weird space thingies we're gonna fly, get ourselves into. The last one I found of these was a completely pitch black cloud. We couldn't see a thing inside it. It was quite weird to fly around there where you just couldn't see anything. No stars, nothing. Okay. Hold on, what? Is that ships up ahead? I'll be a little careful here. Because I don't know what we're dealing with. Hmm. What do we have here? Composition scanner. Do we have that in the firing group? Yes, I do.
We can go night vision, but it's not gonna show us anything. We gotta go closer here in a second. I'm just gonna get a scattered on these things. That's pretty cool. Huh. They're aggressive if I come too close. Gonna inch my way forward. They seem pretty. They don't seem too angry right now. Nervous. That's actually a good question. Oh, hello. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, relax. I think it just passed right through my cargo hatch, didn't it? No, it's solid. Yeah, that's a good question. Because if that thing wanna be aggressive, I can be aggressive too. I need to turn off some modules. That's probably why I turned off my uh, frame shift. So we can turn off the vehicle hanger, the fuel scoop as well. Just give us plenty of power to now turn on the where is it? The pulse laser. Let's just try some other scanners. Oh, cockpit mode is there. <laughs> I don't think I have research limpets. I have a repair limpet. But I have a laser. It does not seem like it cares. Astro versus the thing. Yeah, first encounter, shoot to kill. Nah, it doesn't really care about that. Better get the ship back to its... Uh, the pulse laser off. Oops. 
That one. What happens? Now let's try shieldless. See if that does anything. Yeah, this range it doesn't do a lot to my heat. But as I move closer... Look at this! When my shields are offline, I'm unaffected by the heat. Almost unaffected by the heat. <laughs> Come on, heat sink. Why is my heat sink not working? Well, that was pretty hot. Retracted. That probably damaged quite a few modules. Yes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Imagine that, my cargo. <laughs> um, I'm just going to get some safe distance here. Hold on. Yeah, we'll find the fleet carrier for repairs. That's fine. And with two FMUs online, let's just begin the repair process here. Not turn that online right now. So that's why you bring two FMUs, so one FMU can repair the other. Yeah, you can synthesize um, AFMU ammo. Yeah, the cargo hatch, that took a beating. And my life support, please. Let's just get this ship back up and running before we move over. You gotta look at the other one, don't know if that's the same. 
power distributor needs repairing, sensors need repairing. Can we just put everything under repair, basically? Let's get the power distributor online. And now we're done with these. Turn these off. Put, no, not that one. Take the sensors online. Leave all this stuff offline. Then I want my vehicle hanger online. I want my booster online. There we go. Okay. Well, that was fun. Well, there's not more of them now. Hold on. I don't carry limpets. There are limpets floating around out here. Okay, I think we should go for the other one now. <laughs> Come on, clear the mash lock. I wonder if that one's the same or if it's something different. Took a little bit of damage there. Ah, right. Now I remember why the heat sink wasn't working. No, no collector limpets. Yeah, it's okay. We can do another run. But it was interesting that without my shields, it wasn't doing anything to me until I was right on top of it. Stumped, uh, I'm, um, I'm finding weird things and poking it with a stick, basically. I should have brought a collector, but I don't have one. You can see what I have here. Repair limpets, manifest scanners, all the different scanners, but no collector limpets, no research limpets either. They should never mount aliens. <laughs> That's the quote of the day. <laughs> oh, no, this is different. Solid mineral spheres. Hey, I got a voucher for two and a half thousand credits. So what about these ones? Are these aggressive?
No. I want to see these without um, without night vision. Mineable. I didn't bring a mining laser, but uh, <laughs> I have a pulse laser. But it sounds funny. Go and look at some of the other ones. There's a lot of these. Would I get money every time I scan it? No. Okay. Nothing new to report, so you only get the, like, first time. Honk it. dark in here. I like the little dust clouds that I hear. Hmm. Okay. Let's get out of here. They are not whoops. They're not as interesting as the other ones. I forgot the boost speed on this one is not amazing. We can just see how they have basically cleared an area in the belt. Just look at that. That's actually also a pretty neat shot. If you just scroll out a bit like that. I like that. I like it looks pretty cool as well. And look, I don't know if that's... No, okay, it's just the rocks not popping in. Okay, just looked like the rocks around it was more dense. Like they've been pushed out of the way, but it's just them not loading in right now.
Okay. That was actually pretty funny. Um, I like that. But uh, I still have three more locations in this area I need to explore. And um, that's probably going to be a video at some point uh, in the not too distant future, I would guess. But um, for now, I think I'm going to call the live stream for today and jump over here. Remember, if you did like the stream today, go down and hit the uh, like button. And in a few seconds, you will see lots and lots of links in, uh, in the chat. And there will, amongst other things, be a link for Discord. If you want the screenshot I took earlier, I'm going to post it in the Elite Dangerous Gallery over on Discord, where you are more than welcome to come over and pick it up for yourself in full resolution. And I don't know, use it for desktop, use it for whatever you like. It's up to you. In the chat, you'll also find links for um, Streamlabs. If you want to do a one-time donation to, uh, to the channel to, uh, to help me with uh, some more equipment, I have some upcoming changes I want to do to the studio again. It's a little bit of changing, but there's also Patreon if you want to support the channel on a more monthly basis. And I will also figure a link to the merch store where you can buy yourself a mug or t-shirt. So, I hope you enjoyed today's live stream if you did. Again, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, follow if you're watching over on Twitch, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.